Remax is a new framework for building full-stack web applications. It's built on top of the great React JavaScript framework. And even though it is considered as a full-stack framework, meaning that it can handle both the front-end and the back-end of a web application, it can be used to interact with all kinds of back-ends. And that includes Laravel back-ends. In this video, we are going to use Remax to build the front-end that interacts with the Laravel REST API to authenticate users and fetch data. The back-end we are going to use is the ErgoDNC app that we built earlier during several live streams. I will leave links to the stream and the final code in the description below. So let's get to it, but first let me show you what I have already prepared off-camera. I have created a Remax app using the current stable version, which is version 1 at the time of making this video. I then installed Tailwind CSS, Axios, and .env. There is a guide on how to install Tailwind CSS inside a Remax app in the official Remax documentation. I will leave a link to that in the video description. As for Axios, it is a promise-based JavaScript HTTP client that we will use to interact with our Laravel API. Finally, we will use .env to load server configurations from an environment file. Currently, we have only a couple of environment variables one to store the session secret and one to store the API host. Inside the Remix app, I have created several components for buttons, input fields, labels, and error messages. I've also created several pages with some basic Tailwind CSS styling. One page for the index, another page for the login form, one for showing the user profile, and one for showing a single entry. All these pages currently have a dummy static HTML that's not reading from the REST API yet. Now let's get our Remax server up and running by running npm run dev. When the server is up and running, we will visit localhost 3000 to view our front end. The REST API on the other hand is hosted on the local app.ergodnc.test domain that's served via Laravel Valley. What we want to achieve here is to be able to communicate with our REST API via Syncton token-based authentication. Since Remax embraces SSR or server-side rendering, we cannot use session-based authentication between the Remax server and the Laravel API. That's why we are going to use token authentication instead. However, the token won't be stored in the browser like in a regular SPA or single-page application. Instead, we will store the token inside an encrypted cookie that only the Remax server can decrypt. That protects against leakage of the token via XSS. But before we work on the authentication part, let's first work on the index page and the page for showing a single entry. For starters, we will configure the Axios service to be used on the server side. And to do that, we will create a directory called services and create an axios.server.js file inside that directory. Inside this file, we will import the axios library and export an instance of the client that has the base URL and a couple of headers configured. Notice we are reading the base URL from the API host environment variable that we set earlier. Then we will register a response interceptor on the Axis instance and check if the error status is 401. In that case, we will throw a redirect response. Throwing a response object in Remax allows us to break through the call stack and show an alternate UI or redirect users. And that's what we want here. Now inside the loader of the index.js file, we will use the Axios instance to load the offices from the offices API endpoint. Then if we visit the app in the browser, we can see that it's reading from our Laravel API, no dummy data anymore. Now let's implement another page, which is the page for showing a single office. We will use Axios inside the loader to send a request to the office endpoint to bring the requested office resource. Notice we can read the URL parameters from the param attribute here. Now let's visit one of the office pages 
and here we go we can see that it's displaying the correct office data perfect all right time to work on the authentication part here is the plan we will use the cookie session storage driver to store the api token inside an encrypted cookie in the browser we will update the cookie after we acquire the token from the laravel api and destroy it when the user logs out so let's do that we'll start by creating an auth.server.js file inside the services directory inside this file we will call the create cookie session storage function and configure the cookie name we will also configure the secrets the maximum age and mark it as an http only cookie notice that we read the secret from the session secret environment variable next we will export an async function called login that expects the request instance the user email and the user password inside the function we will get a session instance from the cookie storage and then use axios to send a post request to the login endpoint with the user credentials if the request fails we will return the errors extracted from the response otherwise we will set the user token session attribute to the token returned from the api and then return a redirector that returns the user to the home page with the set cookie header to set the session cookie value finally let's implement a logout function inside the auth service the function will extract the token from the session cookie and send a post request to the logout API on endpoint with the token in the authorization header. Once the endpoint responds, we will return a redirector to point the user browser to the login page while clearing the cookie using the destroy session function provided by Remax. Now the Remax app is ready to authenticate users and log them out. So let's work on the login page. Inside the login form action, we will extract the email and password from the form data and call the login function from the auth service. We will pass the request, email and password to the function call. This function will either return an array of errors if the authentication fails or a redirector if it succeeds. In both cases, we will return whatever the function returns inside the action. If the return value is a redirector, Remax will redirect the user. If the return value is an errors array, Remax will pass this array to the login component, which will pass it in return to the errors component for display. And now our login page is ready. Let's test it by heading to the browser and viewing the login page. Let's provide some invalid credentials first. And here we go. The errors are displayed in the UI. Now let's try valid credentials and we get redirected to the home page. Perfect. So far, so good. But now how will the user know the authentication was successful? Well, let's change the header and display links to log out and view the user profile in case the user is authenticated. For starters, we will add a current token function inside our auth service. This function will read the token from the session cookie and return it. Next, we will add a user function. This one will call current token to get the token and make a GET request to the user API endpoint. Notice that we pass the token to the authorization request header. If the request fails, we will return null. Otherwise, we return the user data. Now we go to the root.jsx file and import the user function from the auth service. Next, we will export a loader that calls the user function and returns the response. Then inside the React component, we will extract the user by using the useLoaderData hook and then pass it to the layout component. Now inside the layout component, we will use the user object to display the logout and profile links if the user object exists. Otherwise, we display the sign in and create account links. 
notice that the logout link is actually a form that posts to the login route. This login route is a Remix route, it's not an API route. So let's create this route while we are at it. We will create a new file under the routes directory and call it logout. Then inside the file, we will implement an action that calls a logout function that should exist inside the auth service. We will return the value returned by the logout function from within our action. Next, we will add a loader that just redirects to the root, to the root page. So if someone visits this logout route, they will get redirected to the home page. Now let's head to the browser and see what we have. We can see that the logout and profile links are displayed because the user is logged in. If we click logout, we will get redirected to the login page and the header links will change back to sign in and create an account because we are now logged out. All right, so now we have logging in and out working as well as retrieving the current logged in user. Let's now look into one more thing, which is redirecting the user to the root page if they visit the login page while they are already logged in. To do that, we will go to the auth service and create a require guest function. Inside this function, we will extract the user by calling the user function we added earlier, and then redirect the user to the home page if we find a token available. And while we are at it, let's create a require auth function. Inside this function, we will extract the current token by calling the current token function and redirect the user to the login page if we couldn't find a token. We will use this function to redirect unauthenticated users away from protected routes. Now let's go back to the login route and add a loader. Inside the loader, we will call the require guest function. We will also call it inside the route action so it redirects or redirects authenticated users and prevent them from submitting the login form again. Now, if we check in the browser while being authenticated, the login page will redirect us to the root page. All right, now it's time we move to working on the last route in our tutorial, which is the profile route. For this one, we will call the require auth function inside the loader to protect the page against unauthenticated access. And then extract the token from the request by calling the current token function. Then we call the reservations endpoint with the token to receive the list of reservations the user has made in the past. And finally, we return the request results from the loader as well as the current logged in user. Let's check everything in the browser. Make sure we are authenticated and then head to the profile page. And here we go. We can see that it was able to read the logged in username and reservations. Now let's log out and then revisit the profile page and we get redirected to the login page. And that's it. We have our Remix app communicating with our Laravel app and authenticating users using token exchange. I'm going to leave links to the code of the Remix app and the Laravel app in the description down below. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something and I hope to see you soon in the next video. Goodbye.